your stuff to apologize. I am not a native speaker, so if you experience and witness some weird expressions, enjoy. <laughs> Uh, I will give a talk about what happened in the last years at the uh, University of Bremen and the city of Bremen uh, with a program that we start there. Um, what happened? Um, in December 2013, an email reached the University of Bremen directorate, actually. It's not a big story, but this emails, uh, the email was asking for Can you hear me, sir? It's okay. Okay. So, uh, uh, it comes from the manager. Came from the manager of a refugee hostel in Bremen, and he told us, "Okay, I witness more and more high-qualified people in my hostel. Can't the university do something for them?" And that's the email actually for my file later, and you see some writings. Uh, they were discussing, can we do something, ask the Department for Student Affairs and said, no, it's not possible, they are refugees, there are some legal restrictions, things like this. And so it came to me as I was, uh, as I worked in the international office for international students and they gave me this email and said, do something with refugees. I said, okay, <laughs> get started, you have an idea about refugees. Uh, there's a sociological wise, it's uh, the idea of an outsider compared to an established. And it's poor, it's hungry, despair, and this picture here it um, just represents a little bit uh, how we see refugees. And also the picture that I had when I called that guy and um, visited the host of the Bremen. And uh, he showed me around and I did a bit of research and uh, discover the situation for displaced persons in Germany, which is like this, if you wait for months and years in a hospital for refugees, uh, you don't have a language course, you don't have a work permit, There's no, there were no internet <coughs> in the hostels, so you lost contact, and also no retreat areas. It's like a bit like a mixture of uh, youth hostel, hospital and prison. So that's the feeling we get there. There's always something is going on and there's no silence. And uh, you stay there for a month and weeks in rooms like with uh, four bedrooms with people you don't know together for a long time. It's quite tough. And when I left the hostel, I said, okay, we have to do something. And we have to do it now. And I did a bit more research on the refugee issue and uh, then was like, um, if you are accepted and get a residence permit, uh, the government aims on an instant job placement. Sounds nice. But regardless of your qualification, any job. So means if you are, let's say, a university professor, then you are, will become a taxi driver. Um, and practically, to join higher education was not really possible. That if here it's always no and impossible. That's the actual outcome. Legally, it, there might be options to work around that you get something of them. But the fact is, you can say this was there was no language course, no retreat areas, and it was impossible to join uh, higher education. So the idea was born. So what to do? As a university, we can do what universities can do, research and education. And uh, the idea was very simple. Uh, we opened our doors for refugees who have already studied at least. At least one semester is enough. And uh, also have knowledge in the English or German language. We invite them to come to use the facilities like having internet access, having library access, and also visit our lectures. Uh, as visitors, as we like visiting students. So the idea of in touch was born, I call it in touch. And what I did was, of course, I first asked some search engines, what do other people do, so what can I copy? And I found out to my surprise, nothing. This was a really surprise to me. This was the first of its kind in Europe uh, that a university, as a university, opens itself to the refugee as a person. 
not as a refugee. There were some programs. They went to the refugee camp and the refugee things with the refugees. But we opened our door and said, okay, you study biology. So you go to our biology department and look around, get a feel of how it functions here in Germany and develop some ideas. So that's, <clears throat> that's what led me then to a new picture of refugees. Uh, actually, the first one I showed was very simple. So I made a survey from the first group in the first year, it was 76 persons. Uh, and in the average, uh, they studied for five semesters. And they counted it for Germany, what does it cost average to study? They bring a capital of over 20,000 euros with them. Uh, educational capital, and that's not poor. So we, this is rich actually, and they studied, they counted it together for 190 years, the first year before. Um, so they bring a lot, and when they're waiting for months and years, they cannot make use of it, and we also cannot make use of that. So, but the main thing is, the person itself, uh, I have here four examples from our first group in 2014. We started in April in the summer term. And uh, at the end, in July, we had a day, we gave some certificates. We thought it's during this, okay, they should get something out of it, although they are not regularly enrolled. And our vice rector, who was very supportive, uh, signed this, and we gave the certificate. And you will see the faces a little bit. This was really an emotional moment. For the first time after a month, or years of flight, they proved themselves that they are competitive. And they did something expertly. So this is Hiba, she's a Palestinian. She studied journalism for one or two years. And now she's studying media science. Uh, then we have Yusuf. He uh, is a Syrian. He was working in some Dubai or whatever and could not come back because the house didn't exist anymore. He's now studying business administration. We have Dobo from Nigeria, uh, studying now computer science, and also Abu Zaid medicine. This is all in our participants. We have had now a few hundred, and this was a uh, full success, one can say. Uh, what we started with nothing and uh, changed perspectives and gave back actually hope to these people again. Yeah, and then uh, we were the first at that time, and in 2014, two other universities in Germany started with a similar program. I don't know if they copied us or have themselves had their ideas. Uh, then in 2015, when it came to the media, the whole one point, I don't know, million refugees, many other universities started to start up similar programs. And also in 2015, <coughs> with the media, the politics, discovered this uh, program and uh, so after the first evaluation we asked the participants say how did you, did you like it they say oh it's wonderful with you guys but we really want to study yeah we don't want to be visitors and uh, so what we needed is language courses German language courses and study preparation programs and uh, yeah actually uh, the funding was uh, we started in 2016 from the government. Now we have 250 refugees only in Bremen preparing for the German language exam. And all over Germany, I yesterday I was in Berlin and I heard 166 German universities who have programs. And also uh, Austria covered a point touch program. And uh, all the universities in Austria uh, started something like this. So in this sense, uh, the theme Dandelion it's really matching. So we started from, from a short email uh, and ended up here in a, like a blooming meadow to say like this, uh, that's a very nice experience uh, to be the witness from the first moment until now. And if you look a bit wider, so I was doing a bit more research on the refugee thing and then I found out what we should have done it a long time ago. This is from 1948. This is the best text I would say that humankind ever produced. It's the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. 
Everyone has the right to education. Education shall be free and higher education shall be equally accessible to all on the base of merit. The brackets here means sometimes you have to pay for higher education. So it's allowed. Uh, but anyhow, uh, the main thing is all on the base of merit and not all on the base of your position in the society, are you an outsider, are you an insider? Uh, only on the base of merit means if you can compete, if you are talented enough, you have a right to do this. And it wasn't done anywhere. But there's even the Convention of Lisbon from about 2000 or 1990s, uh, which also has something like this inside, and refugees have a right to continue their education. But it does not mirror in the legal uh, conventions that are practiced in all the countries, more or less, so far. In Germany, the law were made like this, that you are systematically excluded and higher education seen as a luxury. And this has started to change now, to see higher education as a right and um, spread a bit around in Europe. I was touring around with the program, but I can see that there's still a lot of obstacles in the different countries, you know about Eastern Europe, but also in Spain, I realize they have very difficult situations. They do not fulfill this or agree to this concept at all, but I think it's a very important one. As we learned, we discovered a lot of talents, and we changed a little bit of the world, and with this, I want to like to thank you, and hope you will have a nice day today. Thanks. Thank you.